What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little pass is a business. A dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. I'm Chelsea. And I'm James, and we're married. I forgot my damn ring, and we like to get scared together. <laughs> this is I'm a sorry. running uh, thing on the podcast. James sorry, always boy. forgets his wedding ring. I know. See, he doesn't wear jewelry. I, I don't, but I should know better because we're joined by another married couple today. Oh, yes. 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 I wear all my jewelry for Yeah, you. yeah, yeah you're all blinged how out. Do you, uh, <laughs> David, how do you remember to wear all your beautiful jewelry? <laughs> it's, I, it, there's a little bowl, and I just... Some See, days. I told you, you gotta get a little bull neck. Just your stick your hand in whatever comes out. Yeah, whatever, yeah. What you yeah. Wearing that day. Oh man, we've got Heather Lane, Kim Anderson, and David Leroy Anderson here. I'm so excited. This is such a big month for you two. Oh, well, thanks for having us. It is. It's rare that we have something coming out for both of us. So yeah, yeah it's a fun month, and it's October. Oh yeah, right? we know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that yeah, you guys are just as busy, if not more than than us every time this month comes around each year. Yeah, so Heather, you've got the new Mike Flanagan uh, Netflix project that just, when it, I think when this episode airs, that will have come out already. I'm Dr. Georgina Stanton. Welcome to Brightcliff. Welcome to your first official night in the Midnight Club. Oh, yeah, okay. I think it will have already come out. It comes out the October 7th. Yes, okay. it drops okay. on October 7th. And uh, yeah, I've been waiting in very intense anticipation because we wrapped that show September 9th of 2021. So okay. we've been waiting over a year to actually see the final product. So I've been, yeah, Dave and I have been watching it every every yeah. night. We try to put in a couple episodes. They're intense. Yeah. They're I mean, really it's Flanagan. Intense. They always are. Yeah. Yeah. Flanagan's always going to find a way to rip your heart out. But then he <laughs> brings it all back. You know? I'm, I, I'd, I'd love to meet the kid or person who can watch all 10 in one day. I think that- <laughs> People will do it. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I but they won't be able to do right anything now. for like four days afterwards. I yeah. <laughs> They'll be laid low. So it is, it's more young adult, but it's still that kind of intense emotional Flanagan Super, roller coaster. I mean, I'd say it's the most intense that he's ever done. Okay. I would I would wager that people will agree with me on that. The but, trailer was heavy. Yeah. It's heavy, it's emotionally heavy. For m many of the scenes, and then it's also you know intense and scary in other parts. But the end of the hour, Dave and I are usually like exhausted. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. They're wiped yeah. out mm -hmm. emotionally because these kids are amazing what they bring to the show, and they're so oh, it's so real. It's just really, really great. I can't wait to watch it. I just mm -hmm. like that the trailer had toadies in it. That song is awesome. <laughs> yep. Yeah, <laughs> And like yeah. that arrangement of it was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great and song. you've yeah. also got Cabinet of Curiosities. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, we've got uh, our first Netflix October um, <laughs> and have Cabin, uh, Cabinet of Curiosities coming out. I don't know what the, it's the 22nd, uh, I think? No, the 25th. It's later in the month. Yeah, later in the month. Okay. Um, and I think our episode is one of the last ones, episode seven or eight. Okay, so it's kind of what is the the kind of format of the show? Um, it's a it's it's a bunch of short films basically, with a different director for each film and a different theme. Um, and I was brought in specifically to do episode seven, which is called "The Outsiders." Now, the reason my name came up was because during the production meeting, somebody mentioned the fact that the the feel. Of the of the film should be something like um, Death Becomes Her, and my friend Sean Sansom, who was coordinating the show, said, "Well, let's call the guy that did Death Becomes Her," and they literally got me on the phone immediately and explained it to me, and I was thrilled because it was it was kind of exactly what I've been looking for, which was something fantastic but not horrible. I was, I've done so much horror recently <laughs> mm -hmm. that I haven't been looking for that kind of a challenge, and this one came in, and there was. The key words were um, sparkly, purple, liquid, and I was in. I was like, okay, there's <laughs> no, there's so no, fun. you know, blood spray or decomposition. Yeah, yeah. that's kind and, of a rare prompt to get in horror. For those who don't know, uh, uh, David's a <laughs> legendary makeup and effects artist. What are some of the things that you you've done? God, it goes way back. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a family business, and I just came from the shop, uh, and I was thinking about it on my way over here, and. Um, my dad started the company in the late 70s and bought the building 79, 80 to do uh, Michael Jackson's Captain EO. Oh, shit. I so, love Captain 
Captain. Thank you so much. You just said the magic word. Well, it uh, it's it's the it's the job that kind of built the whole empire. And um, I wasn't working there at the time. Um, I think I came into the picture about four or five years later. Um, but Dad, you know, it was his second career. He was forty years old. He retired as an electrician and decided he wanted to become a monster maker. Wow. That's so cool. Due to an ad in the back of the LA Times for a school, um, he, he did it. He went to night school and retired and started it and got picked up out of school by Tom Berman and Stan Winston and oh, immediately gosh. kind of fell right into the groove and started working and smash cut. A year and a half later, he's looking for his own building and he's doing nights on Thriller. Oh, oh great! A- applying makeups for Rick, so <laughs> the whole thing just took off, and and he he um, completely retired from the electrical union and started doing full time makeup effects. And after um, Captain EO, he had a nice string of films. He he did uh, a couple of the Twilight Zone television series, and then got Serpent in the Rainbow, which was mm-hmm. my first foray with him. Oh, great! And Pet Cemetery and The Crow and the list went on, and then he slowly started to ease out of the business, and Heather and I started easing into the business, and oh, Hot mean, Shots like, Part 2 was Shots our... Hot Shots Part 2 is like the first... It was our yeah. first... Our, our I, first. I was going to say, I watched that in high school at Sleepovers with the Girls, right. which is a weird Sleepovers with the Girls movie, yeah. but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> and then a lot of the Jim Abrams movies like Mafia, Jane Austen's Mafia, a lot, all those... Uh, yeah. comedies like, but it used a ton of makeup effects you know they all had crazy hilarious makeup effects and we loved you know working on those. so yeah we started as um, the David Leroy Anderson studio which didn't really have a ring to it so <laughs> that was for Hot Shots Part 2 and then we formed AFX studio and it's been AFX since the early 90s and um, and w- that's where we did Cabinet of Curiosities and you know since the lockdown, um, the shop has sort of been sitting in limbo, mm-hmm. and I uh, didn't really push the envelope too hard. Um, we took a lot of that time off, and then Heather got her job. So we also had an agreement when we were really young and started our family that we were never going to take a project at the same time mm-hmm. because of the kids. We were always going to okay. one person was going to take the work, and the other person was going to be the parent, and and it really played out that way, you know, in, to our benefit. Most of the jobs that came in were like that, and then. 2020 was no different. There was a couple of opportunities for me, but Heather's big opportunity came up, so we lied low on this side of town and helped support her however we could. Dave came she... up to Canada for a while, so we went camping in the woods, and oh, it's really like beautiful Vancouver, up in, right? yeah, in, in BC. Yeah. Okay. That's where we shot in Midnight Club, so David came up, and on the free time that we had, we would explore British Columbia. Oh, so cool. It was just That's beautiful. So cool. yeah. And you got a practice run in officiating a wedding, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> well, during the pandemic, yeah, um, our employees, yeah, said, we're getting married and we only can have five people. And I just raised my hand. I said, well, if you need an efficient, uh, you know, someone to officiate your wedding, uh, you know, I do have my, you know, my license, my <laughs> ministry, you know, I'm a minister. And so these friends, uh, Christina and Mike uh, O'Brien, they, they're like, oh, we definitely use you. So I got my dry run with them, but there was no one in the audience. <laughs> it was just me and the wedding planner and the couple. And so it was a very small affair. And, uh, and then, lo and behold, I wouldn't have even had my, my ministry license except for you guys, because you had already asked me to do it. And so I had gone ahead and done all the paperwork to make sure that I could officiate a wedding. And lo and behold, there's other people, they kind of beat you to it. But then yeah, yeah. I learned all the pitfalls of doing it. And so I was way better for you guys. Probably. You were flawless for us. Oh my gosh. You had everyone <laughs> weeping. It was so much. And it was like the best. It was such a wonderful day for me to be part of your wedding. It was, it was a yeah. good day for day. us, too. Yeah. yeah, it was also very nice for us, yeah. <laughs> I officiated my sister's wedding a couple months after, and ah. I stole so many things from you. <laughs> I'm, oh, that's wonderful. It was very helpful. That's right. I remember she was getting married as well. The little, key, like, the binder with the printed speech that's also a scrapbook just totally, totally oh. ripped that from you. Oh, good, it's good, It's such good. a good little gift. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Heather printed out our speech and you put like you had taken polaroids that day too that you stuck in there oh that was the best i wish i had more things to put in there i hope you added to it yes we have things we have 
one of the things we stuck in there was, so for our first dance, um, we were practicing before everyone came in for the reception. I kept tripping on my dress because it was, it was too long. Right. And I thought it would be fine, but the dress is made of tool. So we realized we can just cut it with scissors and it won't fray. So we were hacking off the pieces of it. Oh my God. And we stuck pieces that we cut off in the scrapbook. So okay. who, would, who made the dress? Ronaldo? No. No, it was uh, Lizaro. Lizaro, the dress. That yes, was my dress. dream dress. I can't believe you were hacking at it. Okay. Yes, we were. Hilarious. I was like, I'm never going to wear it again. This is part of the story. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I did want to ask, how did you guys meet? Was it through a project or... Because uh, I know... Why is... Does it have anything to do with Miko Hughes? Because that... Because, like, he was on Pet Cemetery and then he was your kid in New Nightmare. And was that just a coincidence? Or, like, oh. did that little kid introduce you guys somehow? That kid had nothing to do with it. Okay. Um, <laughs> however, he is, he is definitely woven in there. Yeah. Um, no, I'll, I'll start the first part. Um, I was on location on Serpent and the Rainbow in uh, Haiti in the Dominican Republic, um, working with Wes Craven. And Wes had two assistants, Marianne and Jill. Jill Simpson. And I was freshly available. <laughs> and they thought that it would be a really good idea for me to meet a friend of theirs named Heather, who was also freshly available. But it, it was their plot um, while we were filming the film. But when we got back to L.A., it just nothing panned out, and we kind of all drifted apart. And it was almost a year before the film surfaced again, and it was for reshoots. Mm. So a year later, we got together for reshoots in L.A. and did, I think, a week or two of reshoots that Wes directed. And then at the end of the reshoots, the, uh, on a Friday night, they said, everybody, come to Wes's house. There's an impromptu party. So that was Actually, it was at Jill's house. It was at Jill's house in West Hollywood. Oh, I got to go back and tell this story about a hundred, a hundred times because I've told everybody all these years it was Wes's house. But you're right. I didn't know where I was going. That's the Wes Craven connection. Yeah. Such a so, yeah. love story. So we're in, a, yeah. we're in a little living room and Heather walked in and... Um, we know, met. We met. <laughs> and everybody smoked back then. Yeah. And I had a trench coat on and I gave her a cigarette and lit her cigarette. <laughs> Gosh. With and my then, Zippo, you know, as cool as I could be. Yeah. 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 And then, yeah, and then from then on, we dated like for a year, and then he did get a job in Maine for Pet Cemetery, mm -hmm. oh, and okay. he went there early in the summer to do all of that that work, and I stayed behind. And it was like in '89. Yeah, maybe yeah. So you were together by then. Okay. So yeah. he's like, "Why don't you come out to? Why don't you come out for the long weekend?" It was September. It was probably Labor Day, and um, I said, "Okay." So I got on the plane, got to Maine, and and then there, where I met Miko Hughes, who's only like four <laughs> yeah. or three, three very or four small. Then, and yeah. David, you know, had a lot of stories about working with such a small child in horror is very, very tough. And mm -hmm. David at night would often say, oh, "I just feel so bad. I mean, I have to make him, you know, bite this heel." He's yeah. slashing at every yeah, like, ankle. And all the yeah. things, all the things I didn't do to get him okay with that, mm -hmm. and it was really stressful for Dave because mm -hmm. Dave has a heart of gold and so anytime <laughs> he sees a kid you know and he has to take care of you know making sure they're not traumatized for the rest of their life yeah, yeah. you know yeah. this is yeah. something that could scar a child and and David was always talking on the phone like it's really tough and so that was one of the reasons I really wanted to get out there and and because he you know it was a very hard job for Dave at the time. And, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you've got to be, as a makeup person, I think one of the best people on set to talk to a, a child who's working because you're the person who, you do make it look real. So you're also the person who can be like, here's why this is fake. Yeah, and here's how real. this happens. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. It was, um, I did everything I could possibly do that I could think of to try and ensure the fact that we didn't destroy Miko. Yeah. Um, it all felt wrong to me. It was, he was oh. so little. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yet his parents were really supportive and wonderful and, you know, had no intention of harming him or yeah. letting him be harmed. But the, the work was grisly. Yeah. You know, and and the, the things that he had to do were terrifying. And we, you know, the one scene he has to bite Fred Gwynn on the neck and tear out his neck. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I decided I wasn't going to be on the set. I oh, couldn't you just couldn't even watch it? I didn't, I didn't go to the set wow. when we actually did that. And um, that's how kind of uncomfortable I was with it. But I did what I could to make the scene go smoothly, but it didn't. It, it was 
it was pretty rough and it scared Miko. And, oh, no. um, sorry fans, but oh. you know, the, the reality is you can explain to a kid all you want, but he was tiny. Mm -hmm. and, and as soon as he saw Fred acting, sure. he thought he did it. And, and you get a real reaction. I mean, that's so, one of the youngest performances in horror movies I can think I, of. I think it like, must be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, besides an infant who is not probably able like to not, process yeah, it yeah. at all. But yeah, I mean, because right of, that verge. Be, yeah, because of that, we actually, um, my dad decided that uh, puppets would be very necessary. So we made these little Miko puppets. But that was also in the day when, you know, we weren't as good at <laughs> puppets, <laughs> puppets yeah. as, we, as things have gotten we didn't and, have all the materials either we didn't have silicone you didn't and, have and it wasn't you know, you know it wasn't a 3d scan of mm -hmm. miko's face it was pieces of a life cast because we couldn't even take a, a full life yeah, cast. Yeah, yeah. we'd take a little cheap a piece and, yeah, yeah just different pieces and then had to put together a sculpture and use that as the face for the puppet and it it looked okay from a distance at 55 miles an hour but yeah mm -hmm up close and in the camera it, it didn't pan out so Miko had to do a lot of the stuff I don't that's know. fascinating like I guess I my first thought was I wonder if that wouldn't have been as bad because if I think of like you know a kid in a horror movie having something happen to them versus his role is very active he is essentially the villain by the end and yeah but I, I didn't think of the the fact that if you have the kid doing something, then you have adults especially reacting like, oh, you hurt me? That's, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I didn't even think of that aspect yeah, to it. That <laughs> yeah. There have not been that many young child yeah. children, you know. Yeah, I could think uh, of like Ray, but even Reagan, you know, Linda Blair is a little older. older. Yeah. 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 Wild. I mean, although I wasn't in the room, I was just outside. Fred was, and, you know, he, he was one of the warmest kindest biggest like wonderful such people gentle, such a gentle person. giant he and, uh, seems even just you know i mean you never know from just watching someone on screen but he has such a warm energy yeah to him. And, and he did and, and he, he also and he was he's yeah. hysterical yeah <laughs> really he also had nasty a children's and hysterical book, and i remember that he gave that children's yeah. book yeah. to miko a copy <laughs> to everybody but oh. you know he had such a love of children and he had such a playful side so i'm sure you couldn't have picked a better person yeah. for a child to be mm -hmm. yeah. acting with in that particular kind of scene. And Miko came out great, so I don't think. Mm -hmm. But we do, like apart. in our lives because you know we do have kids. It's like we're so aware sure. of all the things they make kids do in horror movies that is really twisted yeah. sometimes, and you know it really it, it does affect us. But anyway, that's where we did get engaged, is right during that the oh. height of that. Oh, and, cool. um, they proposed to me. Um, right outside Acadia National Park, right in Maine, and you know the rest. We... Yeah, it didn't really go according to plan. Um, <laughs> I had... There's it in either. <laughs> it never plan happens. as you might. It's just, yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it becomes very spontaneous. Um, the plan was to get up at sunrise and take a hike. Mm -hmm. Which, after working a five-day week on a movie set, waking up at sunrise theme, seemed like a good idea, but it was a terrible idea. Um, um, we never made it to sunrise. The idea was that we were going to walk up in Acadia National Park to the top of Cadillac Mountain, which, if you're on the top of Cadillac Mountain, apparently, when the sun rises, it's hitting the top of that mountain uh, first in, in, America. in North America. In North America. Oh, so, so you cool. get the first bit of kiss of sun. And... Um, it sounded romantic. It sounded like the per perfect place to do it. But I proposed right there in the room at yeah. the hotel that yeah. night. <laughs> the night before, because he just couldn't wait. I couldn't handle it. I was shaking like a leaf on a tree. And, and I literally <laughs> told Heather, my feet are, I have cold feet right now. <laughs> and she didn't know why at the moment. But As a not morning person, I would have appreciated <laughs> Oh, you yeah. being like, I, I have never this really romantic mountain. idea, and I'd be like, great. I, I love that you thought of that so much. <laughs> you know? The idea sounds so fantastic. Ten points for trying. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, okay, you, you guys did not have to use uh, any divining games or ways of, like, <laughs> methods of predicting the future to find each other. Ooh, we may so have. Okay. I don't know. Let's sure, see. Yeah. Let's see what kind of games they were. Yes. I Okay, so the reason I bring that up is I bought this. Listen, what was that transition? It was, no, because I bought this book. This is called Games for Halloween with the little apostrophe between the two E's. Uh, I bought this off eBay about a year ago, uh, wanting to do something for the channel with it. And then this came up and I thought this was perfect. 
Uh, the reason I bring this up is having read this book, 90% of the games in this are just how to divine your future husband or wife and how you will meet them. <laughs> well, that's because uh, this book is from 1912. This book is from 1912. It's over 100 um, years old. Yes, like this copy is over 100 years old. Yeah, um, it is falling apart in It Chelsea is fans. falling apart, unfortunately. I mean, it's not. It's not, honestly not too bad for how old it is. Um, what, what's the apostrophe yeah. removing? Um, is it hollow between? It's, or it's, what? I was, so it's, um, evening. I, evening, it's, it's yeah. Like evening. Because yeah. it was all, it's like hallowed evening, which oh, weirdly, yeah. it's like this, it's like, it's like a holy night, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes from, it's very pagan, mm -hmm. but then it, uh, I think when we, you know, we're, we're trying to like Christianize the holidays because it's not Samhain anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all hallowed eve. Um, and then it just gets smushed into Halloween. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, this copy is from 1912. I did look up, if you're a, a book nerd listening to the podcast, I did look up how to handle old books. Apparently, just wash your hands with soap and water. I, I was like, am I going to have to get gloves so this thing isn't falling apart? But apparently, that's worse for paper. You know, like, the fibers will, like, also, like, just erode the paper. I just know people would comment on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing this for five years. All those nerds out there. <laughs> All right, games for Halloween. Halloween, or Hallow-even, is the last night of October being the eve or vigil of All Hallows mm. or All Saints Day. And no holiday in all the year is so informal or so marked by fun, for, both for grown-ups as well as children as this one. <laughs> On this night, there should be nothing but laughter, fun, and mystery. Mm. It is the night when fairies dance, ghosts, witches, devils, and mischief-making elves we gotta Ooh. bring back Halloween elves. Yeah. What are we I'll be doing? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I feel like Tolkien kind of uh, took yeah. them away, you know? You, yeah, you think of elves, it. you think of leg loss. You don't yeah. think of Halloween stuff. You get like Lord of the Rings elves, you have Keebler elves, and oh, yeah. Christmas elves. I feel like are the three families. Halloween elves. Yeah. Gotta that bring them back. Fun to make. It yeah. would definitely be the most. I would love to see your guys' take on a <laughs> Halloween elf. <laughs> Um, it is the night when all sorts of charms and spells are invoked for prying into the future by all young folks, and sometimes by folks who are not young. Mm. In getting up a Halloween party, everything should be made as secret as possible, and each guest bound to secrecy concerning the invitations. Any of the following forms of invitations might be used. I love these. These are like samples that you can just <laughs> copy if you want. Witches and choice spirits of darkness will hold high carnival at my house Wednesday, October 31st at 8 o'clock. Come prepared to test your fate. I love this. Costume, witches, ghosts, etc. <laughs> no, we're having a Halloween party this year. We I know. I'm, I'm literally going to steal these for our, <laughs> our invitations this year. This, is, this next page is how to prep your home for Halloween. And I'm curious, I, I want to know how you guys like kind of prep each year. Like, do you do anything special or we'll see how similar uh, our traditions are to this very specific. And honestly, I think this sounds very cool kind of uh, decorating scheme. The room or rooms in which most of the games are to be played should be decorated as grotesquely as possible with jack-o'-lanterns made from apples, cucumbers, squash, pumpkins, <laughs> etc. I like that pumpkins are last. Yeah, that's the, they're, they're like an afterthought. Yeah, cucumbers. Do you hollow them out? Mm. It would be very time well, They're easy to carve because they have such a dark skin. Maybe you just... Oh, you can do like the, the shading yeah, kind yeah, of the, thing? I feel like you'd end up like with a Veggie Tales looking thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did it say jack o' lanterns made of apples? Yeah. Uh huh. Those are so okay. tiny. Apparently, pumpkins as jack o' lanterns is a bit more modern. I think squash actually was the most common. Well, that, that one I get because they're a little closer to pumpkins, I feel, yeah. botanically, but like apples. Yeah. That sounds difficult mm -hmm. and tiny. A skull and crossbones placed over the door entering the house would be very appropriate. <laughs> This must have been pretty scandalous back in 1912. I know, this is devil yeah. stuff, a skull right? And, yeah, a skull I don't know, because you look at costumes from back then, and they're terrifying. They're like, kids scary. walk around in those homemade right. costumes, yeah. and they're like plague doctor masks this and stuff. This also might be the tail end, or, you know, I think it might still have been very popular of the kind of spiritualist movement. Like, yeah. the Victorians mm -hmm. were obsessed with, with contacting the dead mm. and spirits and ghosts because the mortality rate was just so high. Mm. 
And I'm wondering, because this is right before World War One. Mm-hmm. When was that? That was 1930. 1918, yeah. Yeah, that was well, ended in 1918. Ended in 1918, yeah. yeah. So I, I wonder if that continued up through them, because again, that was just like, ca- you know, catastrophe on a scale we'd never seen before. So I wonder if like 1912, this kind of like, you know, contact with the other side isn't as scandalous as it might have been maybe like the 50s yeah yeah or it might be seen as more pagan or like Mm -hmm. unchristian where you start getting that like religious revival in the united states too it's really interesting yeah yeah the (laughs) dining room should also be in total darkness except for the light given by the jack-o'-lanterns until the guests are seated when they should unmask so everyone has to come wearing a mask too that's That's really fun Mm -hmm. (laughs) this is my Favorite suggestion in this entire book, and I've never heard of anything like this, and I kind of want to do this when people come over for our party. Another suggestion is to have the hall totally dark with the door ajar and no one in sight to welcome the guests. As they step in, they are surprised to be greeted by someone dressed as a ghost who extends his hand, which is covered in wet salt. (laughs) Wet salt. What are we doing? (laughs) I don't know. Wet salt. I mean, it's. It's otherworldly, maybe. Feeling? I get, but like, isn't wet salt just salt water? Like, how do you? I get... mean, it's just like your hand is just wet and like kind of. You dip oh, and it just... so, oh, so it doesn't kind of feel like coarse? a human hand. It's coarse and feels. Oh, okay. Yucky, I wonder maybe. if that's kind of like a. I feel like it should be like sea salt or like slime. Boots. Yeah, I think slime. Slime would, makes more sense to me more, than like. More. I wonder if this is kind of like a predecessor of the like bowl of spaghetti and the bowl of grapes that are eyeballs. Right. Yeah, it's unexpected. Kind of Maybe just a shock value. Yeah. yeah. I just yeah. thought that was so Wet <laughs> salt. <The> wet salt. <laughs> that might be the first time I've heard those two words together in that order. All right. Oh, I I, have I've to... actually heard wet salt before. Oh, yeah? Really? Yeah. Um, I learned it from a friend who um, taught us this remedy for burns, and it's wet salt. Oh. And so if you ever get a little second-degree burn on your hand... Put a little water on it and put salt on it until it's a, like a scab of wet salt. Really? And then wrap it up. Okay. And, and it cures and, your and blisters. It'll, yeah. it, it won't blister. All right. The salt will pull the water through the blister, and the next day you unwrap it and the skin is still down, you don't have a blister, and it kind of turns into a callus overnight. Yeah. Oh. Is that the same kind of principle as, we, this is going to sound weird, but curing meat? You know, or you just it's the salt? Same, it's just yeah. like, yeah, it's sure. how you cure fish and meat. Yeah, it just, yeah. It draws all the moisture out. Okay. Right. And it's good to know. It's a, David has a lot of skin remedies. Yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is like a backwoods <laughs> North Carolina remedy that I learned. <laughs> Uh, here's one of the little games where it's... This I'm is, sorry, is there a thing that says pulling kale? Yeah, I'm going to read that one. Like kale? Like, kale, like the, the food. If I thought that kale started existing like about 10 years ago when it became like the, the fad <laughs> food. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's weird to around. see it. In, yeah. It's been around. Millions it, of years. No, it wasn't existed. invented at Whole Foods. <laughs> yeah, right? Or at like... The Pizza it, Hut. Uh, buffet okay, garnish, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. So this is a this is a divining your future spouse one, but I just think it's so funny in the specifics of it. And I'm curious if you, because I know when we had sleepovers, it was like me and my girlfriends. We would do little games to divine, like who are we gonna marry? Did you right. either of you play games? Like that's more of a, a teen girl. We thing. used to have those folded. Paper yeah, that's things, what I was gonna say. And you put all the boys' names in there, and then yep. see which boys. And what but kind of also, house you would live in and stuff? Yeah, yeah, we would. Yeah, we would definitely play those games. Yeah, why? It's such a weird thing. We would just wrestle. <laughs> sure, yeah, just yeah. backyard wrestling. <laughs> Girls, yeah, we're kind of obsessed with that. Well, or also, if you did have a boyfriend, you would write their name, like if their last name was, you know, mm-hmm. Smith. You'd be like Heather's. Yep. You know, yeah, you know, write it out Practice in your best your cursive writing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I wish we had this one when I was in high school because this is great. Uh, this is pulling kale. All are blindfolded, and this is again, this is a game for Halloween. Mm-hmm. Okay. For some reason. Okay. All are blindfolded and go out singly or hand in hand to garden. Groping about, they pull up. <laughs> groping about, they pull up first. It's this book leaves out um, like articles sometimes, like the or an, and I don't know if it's just a stylistic. Yeah, thing or, I think yeah. it's just it, it's just an old language thing. I don't know. <laughs> Groping about, they pull up first stalk of kale or head of cabbage. 
If stop comes up easily, the sweetheart will be easy to win. If the reverse, hard to win. The shape of the stump will hint at figure of prospective wife or husband. Oh, Lord. Oh, its length will suggest age. Ah, okay, 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 age. If much soil clings to it, life partner will be rich, if not poor. Finally, wow. the stump is carried home and hung over door. First person outside of family who passes under it will bear a name whose initial is the same as that of sweetheart. That's very involved. That's complicated. It's very, very yeah. Also, I feel like a farmer wrote that just to get their friends to harvest their crops for them. <laughs> like, all right, here, here's our game. We're going to go out there. But, just gonna... but also, it's like, what a waste of food. Like you say, like, it's not wartime mentality because yeah, you never just sure. let all your vegetables be picked in the party. Oh, my God. Party? If some kid, like some World War II era kid finds this book and is doing as their parent runs out, it's like my victory garden. <laughs> <laughs> you destroy the garden. Though maybe these are the vegetables that you didn't pick because October. Well, October thirty first, pretty late, no, right? Kale is a winter. Yeah. It is a winter. Oh, crop, okay. I think. Oh, that that's right. All right. Wow. But anyway, you're wasting a lot of kale. Yeah, I feel like if I took the time to plant a garden and grow these crops, <laughs> and then it was just like, all right, friends, blindfold yourself and just pull, pull whatever. <laughs> Our first sponsor this week is Bond Charge. Bond Charge is a wellness brand with a huge range of products to help optimize your life in every way. They're gonna help you sleep better, perform better, have more energy, recover faster, the list goes on. From blue light glasses to blackout sleep masks, Bond Charge products help you naturally address the issues of modern day life effortlessly and with maximum impact. James and I personally love their blackout sleep masks. I mean, look at how snugly this man looks right here in the video version of this podcast. Is he laying in bed with all the lights on? Wasteful, but yes he is, because Bond Charge's sleep masks provide you with 100% darkness. They'll help you solve issues with frequent awakenings in the middle of the night, unintentional naps during the day, and poor sleep overall. We've also found that these are fantastic for plane trips, especially since they don't put pressure on your eyes. I get headaches when I fly anyway, so any pressure relief is much appreciated. Bond Charge ships worldwide in record time from Australia. Australia, which is where all their products are made. And again, they have all kinds of other amazing products like low blue light bulbs, red light therapy devices, and blue light glasses, all backed up by scientific study. If you want to try out Bond Charge products, you can go to bondcharge.com slash deadmeat and use the coupon code deadmeat to save 20%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash deadmeat and use the coupon code deadmeat to save 20%. Our next sponsor this week is Shudder. James and I love ourselves a good scare, especially this time of year. And when it comes to horror films, we like them scary good. That's why we love Shudder, where they premiere a new horror movie or series every week. Hollywood favorites and the claim new movies you can't find anywhere else, it's always streaming uncut and commercial free on Shudder. From now until October 31st, Shudder is dropping a ton of scary good titles for their 61-day Halloween celebration. Shudder also just premiered their 101 scariest horror movie moments of all time. If you enjoyed our episode on the original series of the same name a few years back, you've got to check out this updated version with master filmmakers and genre experts celebrating the most terrifying moments of the greatest horror films ever made. And on October 20th, VHS 99 premieres. It's the return of the claimed found footage anthology franchise themed this time around the analog days of VHS and the turn of the millennium. I'm particularly excited for Flying Lotus's segment. I've been a huge fan of his since I was in college and I love how much he loves horror. Shudder has everything supernatural, thriller, and horror. I can't get enough of it. And you're gonna love it too. And right now you can stream your first 30 days of Shudder for free. Go to Shudder.com and use code DEADMEAT. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com code dead meat stream free for your first 30 days by going to shutter.com use the code dead meat our last sponsor this week is fume it's the halloween season and there's maybe nothing scarier than trying to quit smoking and not fun scary either more like stressful exhausting scary it's hard to quit especially when smoking forms physical habits aside from an actual addiction to nicotine if this resonates for you maybe it's time to check out fume fume is the natural inhaler designed for a 
better, safer, and more natural way to quit cigarettes. It's a no smoke, no vape, and no nicotine replacement for the hand to mouth habit of smoking. It's a wooden inhaler that uses cores infused with plant oils to curb cravings. They have flavors like Conquer and Peppermint with minty notes to simulate menthol cigarettes, and other flavors like Cozy Chai and Lemonberry Bliss for a sweeter experience. That Cozy Chai actually sounds really, really good. <laughs> and all of their flavors are 100% natural. No harmful chemicals, no artificial flavors, and absolutely no nicotine. I don't personally smoke, but Fume sent me an inhaler to try myself, and it's actually incredibly pleasant. I really love the peppermint core. It even has the nice side effects of kind of opening up the sinuses. The pipe is really cute, too. You can tell it's handmade and high quality. Whether you're a smoker or ex-smoker who still struggles with cravings, Fume is the perfect tool for you. Head to breathefume.com slash deadmeat and use the promo code deadmeat to save 10% off your entire order. That's 10% off your entire order when you head to B-R-E-A-T-H-E-F-U-M.com slash deadmeat and use the code deadmeat. This one I think is actually very <laughs> scary sounding. This is very, it's, it's short, but I love the idea of this for like a horror movie scare. This was, this is Cellar Stairs. Cellar stairs test is where a girl boldly goes downstairs backwards holding a mirror and trying to catch in it the features of him who is to be her mate. That honestly freaked me out. That's it? What? Wait, so she's walking backward, looking at the mirror or looking behind You're her? like holding the mirror and, and walking there's a, downstairs backwards. Yes. backwards. That and there's a few like versions of this. Idea. One of them is like you're holding a candle. I don't know, but it's I'm just imagining this dark set of stairs and you have this mirror and it's just dark. That's so scary. You're imagining like their face in the mirror. Yeah, That's you're trying to find. Scary. Yeah, like, should there be someone down there, or is it just? No, it's just your your imagination. Yeah. Just hoping to see. There's Tony a few Todd versions there, of this, and each of them are terrifying. But That's this is terrifying. the first one that shows up. If I flip past any other ones, I will. Oh yeah, here's another one. This one honestly might even be worse. This is called combing hair before mirror. <laughs> That's just getting ready. Stand alone before <laughs> mirror and by light of candle comb your hair. Face of your future partner will appear in glass peeping over your shoulder. Oh my god. Well, I'm not going to give away any details, but both of those could be prompts for prompts for um, the theme of our episode in Cabinet of Curiosity. Oh yes? yeah. Yes. Yeah. Got oh. There's Ball there's mirrors. Basements and stairs. Yes. And, Okay. That mirrors, we're a lot all of afraid mirrors. Of that. And, and yeah, this conjuring of, of yeah. Well, I wonder how long uh, back Bloody Mary goes. You know. Like oh yeah. Did you did you guys do that when you were young? Bloody Mary? I did. I don't yeah. think I knew what I was it's doing. It's very similar yeah. to Bloody Mary. Though. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something about mirrors that is just like forever terrifying. I think as long as mirrors have existed. Yeah. Or as long as humans have been able to perceive their reflection mm -hmm. there's something so scary about it i remember when i was a kid i had a mirror in my room but then i watched poltergeist 3 which has some stuff with mirrors like people right. being, like coming out of mirrors i got so scared that i like kicked my door until the mirror broke and then i had it removed from my oh room oh my god well, i mean yeah. in alice in wonderland and through the looking glass yeah i mean it's actually terrifying what through the looking glass is you know prompting us to imagine mm -hmm. that maybe there's this other world on the other side of it that is yeah. very yeah it's strange because it's like it's like what you're seeing you but like a weird mm -hmm. mirrored yeah. version and yeah i think it's still an effective scare for me whenever someone's looking at a reflection and then the reflection does, does something, something that they don't right. so like and that that was as recent as like last night in soho and the uh the, the trailer trailers for, for don't, don't worry, worry darling has well that there's a on. great i won't give anything away but in the second episode of uh the midnight club there's a really cool scene with a mirror. In it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, uh, it's one of my favorite scenes so far. And oh, it has man. a big part in the in the storyline too. So is, the, episode is that what prompted two. your question last night? Strange that we're talking about mirrors because it was almost the last thing you said last night before we went to sleep. In fact, we were in the bedroom and there's a mirror and there's a light and Heather just said out of the blue, "Is the light coming out of the mirror a hundred percent?" equal to the light that's on We've the... We've had this exact that's conversation, question, yeah. I feel like. Or is it less Yeah, because the, the And the also, bouncing. does it and double I, the light in the room? I, I was so tired. I was like, oh, that, this really yeah. hurts. Yeah. I couldn't <laughs> really think about that question. Right. And my response was, it depends on the level of mirror. Oh, like... A hundred percent mirror would be a hundred percent bounce back. But mirror quality, I think, varies. Sure. 
you know, the, the actual quality of a mirror and the way that the reflective mm-hmm. surface is put into the mirror has something to do with that bounce back. So you can have an old crappy mirror that doesn't bounce back because if you microscopically look at it, it's not a perfect mirror. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if it was a perfect mirror, you'd be looking at an exact representation of whatever it was mirroring. That makes so sense. light, I would think, would be just as bright. But then I, thought, then I thought, I what said, if you lined really up 100 scary. of those mirrors by the end of that same light bouncing through 100 mirrors? It would probably be less. Yeah, right. I would think, but maybe not. But, but maybe if not. It's, yeah, because then if you're getting into like laws of like of energy optics. conservation and, and stuff and too. Yeah, optics as well. So mm-hmm. I mean, light would seem to just bounce back. Anyway, yeah, so are that very was strange scary. that you brought that's it up like because that's what we went to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> contemplating. No, I think like that's like you know people try to invent um like infinite uh like energy machines where right. like you know it just kind of perpetual. Goes. It's yeah, yeah per- that's yeah. it. Perpetual. Yeah, where it's the same kind of dude. I fall asleep thinking about the same. Kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. I get <laughs> it. Let's just think about in in the mummy, the Brendan Fraser mummy, where they like light up the underground cavern with a bunch of mirrors. We have talked like, about like, this like four times in, <laughs> in like the past month. And like I know. everything we it was. Our last podcast and our last Dungeons and Dragons, we do have a Dungeons and Dragons yeah. podcast. Yep, uh, that's DMs. our Dungeon Master. Yay. And that's how we lit up a room, right? With yes. mirrors? With yeah. mirrors. Yeah. From, from a source of light. A source of light, and then it bounces back and forth until it fills the room with light. And yeah. I'm like, does that, is that That's right? what I was trying to get at. Like, does it serve the purpose of a real light? Mm-hmm. Like, can it be like a real light? Yeah. Also, uh, it makes sense that Mike Flanagan would do something with mirrors since Oculus. Oh, Oculus. Yeah. Really, was that his first movie? I think it was his first movie. Was Maybe it, first it, feature. Yeah, movie? but yeah. I know that he always sneaks in the mirror from that. <gasps> oh, in it's show. in our show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay. But actually, when, to look out for. it was, you know, I'll say, it was just kind of sitting in this open place that... I wasn't paying attention to it. And then the minute someone said that it was the Oculus mirror, I got so scared. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I do think it's visible to the audience, but I know that it's there. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it has a big part. Yeah. Me. Okay. But he does make sure that I think that it's in every movie. Mm-hmm. That's um, awesome. But that movie, I really enjoyed Oculus. You know, We watched it like almost 10 years ago. I would ago. like to yeah. rewatch it. I want to rewatch years, it. Yeah. Yeah, you were there. Really liked it. Yeah. Which was eight years ago yesterday. Yeah. Oh, hey. Yeah. hey. <laughs> Happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with Karen Gillan, who I know is a big horror movie fan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, these just get. I think as this book goes on, these get weirder and weirder. They like really saved some gems for later on in here. This is called Around the Walnut Tree. <laughs> Of all Halloween spells and charms associated with nuts, as we know there are so many, (laughs) the following is one of the oldest. If a young man or woman goes at midnight on Halloween to a walnut tree and walks around three times crying out each time, let him, or parentheses, her, that is to be my true love, bring me some walnuts. Future wife or husband will be seen in tree gathering nuts. What the (laughs) fuck is this book? Why is it all about finding your future spouse? That's all they cared about, man. It's Halloween. They made, I know. They didn't have like TV back then to like keep <laughs> yeah. us company. They only had, you know, the the, the options of like a happy married yeah. life. Yeah, that you're looking for when you're yeah. like twelve. Yeah, which is hilarious because the one under this is ducking for apples, which we have all mm. done. Which it is a. I it's really like, is it like just like. To do it together, it's like do it yeah, with it's other people. Into one tub half filled with water are placed apples. Uh, to the stems are which tied bits of paper containing the names of boys. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's why I read it. It's because it's like, oh, cool, this is a. Ho- oh, okay, no, it's just another game, the dating game, yeah. dating game. But it is yeah. fun that like that is so old this like bobbing for apples thing i feel like that's gotta be on its but, way out though i mean good gross. luck doing that game today yes, I mean, yeah. there's no way that yeah anybody post covid there's no way but also just the idea that you know to have people's names put them on the spot like that like at yeah. a party know. matchmaking you know, your children matchmaking <laughs> is so not bizarre appreciated well I also i guess back then ha- back then it's likely that you're gonna marry someone in your town. Yes, in your town, and you're also getting married when you're like eight, 17, 18, probably. Right, yeah. Yeah. It's just so awkward, though. I just can't even imagine playing that game. I know. <laughs> I know. Here's one that has nothing to do with dating, but also is one of the games in this book where you realize, oh my god, they did not care about fire safety. It's so <laughs> great. Uh, this is called Candle and Apple. At one end of a stick 18 inches long, fasten an apple. At the other end, a short piece of lighted candle. 
Suspend the stick from the ceiling by stout cord fastened in its middle so that stick will balance horizontally while stick revolves that so you're spinning the stick with a with fire on it and a yeah, lit candle on the candle. other end. Players try to catch the apple with their teeth. <laughs> a prize, maybe. <laughs> so you can either get the apple or just get hit Burn. in the face with a lit yeah. candle. <laughs> oh my god. Well, didn't you say one of these had to do with lead? I can't lead? even visualize yes. that. That is too tough. One of these is just a game where you melt lead <laughs> and make it into shapes. <laughs> You don't eat it or anything, no. no. Okay. But you're just playing with melted lead. I'm sure there's one that's like, uh, the mercury bounce. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, who could write this book today, though? Like, what what silly things are we doing? We're so boring. This, this <laughs> I know. feels like something you would see. This feels like a very long kind of like Pinterest uh, thing, oh, you know, oh, where it's yeah. like cute ideas or like... um. You know, like someone's you like a lifestyle YouTube channel or TikToks where it's like you put little cool. spiders on top of your cupcakes. I know. Yeah, and yeah. This is this is a, lo- a level beyond that. Yes. Yeah. 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 There's literally something here that says dry bread. Do you want me to read <laughs> People dry are so bread? Boring, man. <laughs> dry bread is not that. Uh, but I will read it. No, don't brought. read dry bread. It's fine. It's just you eat bread and then you kind of wish for it's basically a spouse butter well, yeah. you wish for butter <laughs> yeah wait there were butter actually this one's not about spouses this is about like having like it's about kind of wishing for certain dreams at night where it's like you want yeah okay and you know having pleasant dreams basically okay this one actually i thought is, one is very funny and two is so mean and I oh, still yeah, kind of want to do it to someone. Okay, okay here, this is called The Farmyard. <laughs> <Were> you... Uh-oh. <laughs> it sounds, I think it sounds worse than it is. This game, if carried out properly, will cause great amusement. One of the party announces that he will whisper to each person the name of some animal, which at a given signal must be imitated as loudly as possible. Instead, however, of giving the name of an animal to each, he whispers to all the company, with the exception of one, to keep perfectly silent. To this one, he Im- he whispers oh. that the animal he is to imitate is the donkey. After a short time so that all may be in readiness, the signal is given. Instead of all the party making the sounds of various animals, nothing is heard but a loud bray from that one unfortunate member of the company. <laughs> is that bullying? Is that bullying? No, that's, no. Like, that's very like, mild hazing. It is, mild it's hazing. Very, yeah, it's definitely shades of hazing. Um, this is on the same page as melting lead, too. I mean, if I was going to have a Halloween uh, party for my child, I'm not allowed to do that one. No. no. That I can see if you have a group of adults and the person and you pick as someone who's not going to be like, oh, wow, all my friends hate me. I think it's just an excuse to call that person a jackass. I was going to say the jackass. <laughs> Here's the, uh, okay, so each person melts some lead and pours it through a wedding ring or key into a dish of water. The lead will cool in various shapes supposed to be prophetic. Any ingenious person will interpret the shapes and furnish much amusement for the listeners. Thus, a bell-shaped drop indicates a wedding within a year. A drop resembling a torch or lamp signifies fame. A pen or ink bottle that the future companion is to be an author. A horn of plenty, wealth, a bag or trunk, travel, etc. Yeah. But just melting lead. Where do we find the lead? I mean, like... Like oh, fishing. back then, oh, probably in the fishing bullets. everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you're in the Just pipes. Dig a hole. Of your in the house. pipes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dig a hole, find some lead. Absolutely. I, it's curious to me that uh, the, one of those options was like fame. What what would fame mean in 1912? Because obviously, what? I was gonna say what? vaudeville. Vaudeville. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah, or you could be a singer. You could be on radio. No, was the radio We're just coming in the radio? Right. Yeah. Would yeah. they have yeah. had radio in 1912? Oh, and maybe if you're early. wealthy. Fame, you're just maybe on the in the front page of the paper. Perhaps. Right, yeah. yeah. You grew the biggest crops the, that year. The bit, most amount of kale. The biggest kale. Yeah, yeah. Biggest, you grew the biggest kale. <laughs> the kale resembles a person. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Or you, like, invent a a, a, a tonic and <laughs> yeah. sell it at, yeah, the, right. at the sundry store. Or you're, like, you know, Miss... You know, Georgia Peach, or like, yes, you know, you become sure. like, you win a beauty pageant, mm-hmm. you know, or something like that. It's not too far off from movie, because I'm thinking of like, Nosferatu is always my go to of like early cinema, and, you know, Max Shrek, we all know that name. Mm-hmm. That was like 1922, so. Yeah, that's so that's close. still 10 years to go, though. So, yeah, this would yeah. be like, like, you're going to the theater to watch like footage that 
the Lumiere brothers. I was going to say, when's a trip to the moon? Is that around? That's around. That's then. about then. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah. So maybe, yeah. 1902. Oh, Okay. Wow. Okay. Damn. Well, because when was Pearl set? That was 1918. Okay, I so yeah. yeah. It was wartime, yeah. And there's like, she's going maybe. to see movies and that. Yeah. I mean, they're but, old. They're like wartime updates, yeah. Have you seen Pearl? No. Oh, okay. It's that, very did you good. see X? No. Okay. Because Pearl's <laughs> like the prequel to, to X, which Those both are... came out this year by Ty West. Really, really good. Yeah, two and uh, one. Oh, right. Year. We'll have to do that. That's yeah. a list. <laughs> Make a list. <laughs> Noted. James, James, and Chelsea. Yeah, it's it's hard to keep up with you guys. I mean, it's hard for it's, us to keep up. This, this year, year is has been really hard. Wild. Nuts for yeah. horror movies. So, yes, many. so many. I've never seen so many. this many horror movies come out. In well, a year. because we went through the pandemic. Yeah, it's you know? the backlog. It opened up our our subconscious to just so much. People actually could relax and think. Yeah. You know, right. Mm-hmm. And think of great ideas too. Mm-hmm. So. Stand in front of mirror in dimly lighted room and eat an apple. If your lover reciprocates your love, he will appear behind you and look over your right shoulder and ask for a piece of apple. A piece okay. of apple. Like, hey, you gonna you gonna eat all that? <laughs> now that just plays into the idea that most people probably never have at that age requited love. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like everyone yeah. always feels like, oh, I love him, but he doesn't love me, mm-hmm. and so that. You're never going to see the guy eating the apple. That's yeah, the, you know, right? Yeah. Feeds this, right into that. This book has convinced me that back then, all they had were candles, mirrors, and apples. <laughs> yes, so. 100%. And you're ultimately going to well, end up alone. Well, they also had, this is the very last one. Uh, honestly, this could, be, this could be the setup for a great scare in a horror movie. Okay. They also, they have balls of yarn back then. Uh, throw a ball of yarn out a window, but hold fast to one end and begin to wind. As you wind, say, I wind, who holds, over and over again. Before Ooh. end of yarn is reached, face of future partner will appear in window, <laughs> or name of sweetheart will be whispered in ear. But that is creepy. I could see that being used in like a horror Ooh. movie. Yeah, yes. where it's Very like, visual. what's going to mm. be on but the But there's need to be something at the end that, mm. that you pull in. Yeah, yeah. So maybe tugs on a it. piece of kale. <laughs> yeah, so just <laughs> with this part, kale. Yeah, these are the kale size, man. Yeah, shape. <laughs> Oh man, the rest of this book is like a bunch of riddles, which I love because some of them are uh, so antiquated that the answers don't make sense to like our modern ears. But some of them are, uh, why are weary people like carriage wheels? I don't know. <laughs> because they're tired. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That's a... The carriage wheel got me. Yeah, I was like, what's, what's I didn't know they were tired. Wheel. I thought carriage wheels were just like wooden all the way around. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, See, that's a tires. trick question that's because trick they, question. they still had steel tires back then. Yeah. Too. <laughs> <laughs> or steel wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like, why is a dog biting his tail a good manager? Um. Uh. Hmm. This one I actually can't. Okay, I yeah. give up. Because he makes both ends meet. Ah, oh, that's, oh, that's a good cute. one. I like that that's one. Cute. Yeah, they're all, I mean, that's, I don't know why there's this whole, like, little chapter of these. There's I, think, one... I think actually people memorize them so that when they did go to parties, mm-hmm. that they could deliver mm-hmm. riddles, you know, instead of, you know, watching the latest show, that there's something to talk about is... And this is entertainment. I think people knew a lot of riddles. Yeah. yeah. That's why, like, it, it's weird. I don't think, I mean, I don't go to, like, bookstores that often, but you don't see, like, joke books anymore. Right. Yeah. Because I feel like you used to just, like, I had books of just jokes when I was a kid. Were they kept in the bathroom? <laughs> no, but I know what I you're talking like, about. Yeah. The, like, bathroom reader kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love, too, that all these are pretty innocuous, and there's one that's like, oh, we're getting a little anti-Semitic. We're not going to read that one on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. But, yeah, do you guys have Halloween traditions or anything you do occasionally? We've had oh, some we're... really good haunted houses. Well, we yeah, we, we used to. Yeah. We're so boring relative yeah, to Halloween. Yeah, we are boring it's, now. It's, it, I mean, it... It's hard when it's like this is our busy season as well. Exactly. Yeah. It's like we we do all year long. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then and then we're supposed to get extra enthusiastic <laughs> yeah, for one sure. month. And one time I remember we decided to decorate our lawn when the kids were probably like eight or ten, you know, that age when and we went to the trouble of making this zip line across the whole lawn. And as soon as you opened the gate, 
this very terrifying head would just like come right at Whoa. you. That's so it fun. was great. It's hard to say what a tradition would be because you know, in order for it to be a tradition, you have to do it every year. Right. Mm -hmm. There's really nothing that we did every year other than me doing makeup on the kids. <laughs> To at a level that they were terrifying the other kids at school yeah, and yeah. inevitably I, yeah. coming home would crying. Would you put them in like full <laughs> makeup for school? Or? We did. We would <laughs> always paint them up. Um, and then, uh, and and I mean, Atticus was a bat and we painted him up oh, and put ears on Oh, such a realistic, him and, yeah. And they were all a little bat. over the top, mm -hmm. a little too much. Um, and that just seemed to be the trend, the tradition. Um, and then we went and did Dawn of the Dead and the kids came to Toronto and we filmed Dawn of the Dead and then we came home and it was Halloween and of course everybody wanted to be zombies. Mm -hmm. And my kids were completely desensitized to zombies. Mm -hmm. I mean, completely. They hung out with the stunt crew every night and <laughs> in makeup and they got in makeup a bunch of times. And so Isabel in particular wanted to be a zombie and I, I just used the same palette. David Leroy Anderson zombie palette and I painted <laughs> her up with a couple of colors and it was... In my mind, it was not over the top, but in in reality, it yeah. was really, really awful. Looking yeah, to our see calibration's this. a little off. Uh, yeah. Mine was completely off. Yeah. Um, no, the one the last I've recovered time, since then, but did they ever get in trouble at school, like for the severity of the makeup? Or well, it, I'm I, sure there were teachers, teachers that were yeah, about ready to talk to us, but Isabel yeah. just decided to come home. Oh, okay. she just that was it. She threw in the towel. She came home and she she dressed up as a a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Went back to school. Yeah. But yeah, the last I think. The last time you did that was for Isabel's friends. They all came over and they didn't really like they had cheerleader outfits on and then one guy had it and by the end of the, you know, makeup session, which lasted probably like three hours, the kids are like, We need to get to the party. Right. Yeah. Um, but they all looked so terrifying. <laughs> and uh, you know, you had the dead cheerleaders, but then you had yeah, really, really scary makeups. But it was always really fun to do that and uh Yes, I, lately, but the tradition we, is going know, too far. I yeah, think. we haven't. David, you know, gosh, the last time we did my makeup, he did the really cool makeup, like where, where I closed my eyes, my eyes were actually open. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. that was like a really neat makeup. And David's done some great things on himself once in a while. But in general, we kind of lay low and just, we hope for trick or treaters to come. And mm -hmm. we live in an area where there just fewer. aren't any. Yeah, yeah we, we don't get any. We don't get any. A lot of I was yeah. devastated yeah. when we realized, because I grew up in a house where no one came to trick or treat. And I remember as a kid being like, someday, yes, yeah, I'm going to exactly. be in the blog where no, everybody... I've never had yeah. trick-or-treaters. Yeah, sucks. I was lucky enough to have trick-or-treaters. My dad would decorate like all out. I'm wondering the... if you put like a little sign on your mailbox or something that said, we'll be home on Halloween know, right? with lots of candy. Like, see if anybody would... Well, I had the thought of like, oh, we could kind of turn this into a whole like walkthrough kind of haunt thing. But then to get people to come here... I, it would just be a problem of like, oh, now people know we live here. Yeah, yeah, that would be problematic. Like, yeah, yeah, you don't want, you don't want, you want, want to be anonymous. But that. I'll never forget my neighborhood was like what you, you know, desired mm -hmm. is that we had tons of kids and everybody went to everybody's house and um, one neighbor who was elderly took Polaroid pictures of every child who came for like for twenty years and they when you went to that house. You could see everyone's <gasps> costumes for like 20 years. It was oh, wow. amazing. So cool. it was, and I keep thinking, what happened to those? Yeah. It'd be such a great little time capsule of that Halloween would... through the ages. You yeah. Know, probably. Those would make an amazing book. Like yeah. Like a coffee table yeah. Yeah. book of just, yeah, what costumes. It? Yeah, because cool. what years would that have been? Well, it would have been like six, 19, when, whenever the Polaroid was invented, probably 65 mm -hmm. through 80, you know, like just... A, that's a big thing, probably. Yeah. yeah, a lot of kids came through their house, and Lots, but there's, yeah. that's the kind of tradition that I really appreciate is traditions that one memorialize all these great costumes that the kids are making, and I mean not just kids, everybody. Mm -hmm. And now with our cell phones, we can. But mm -hmm. it was tougher when we were growing up. Like my mom didn't take one single picture of me in costume, and no, but that yeah. guy did. <laughs> oh. I'm kind of creeped out by that Which idea. One? Your Polaroids oh, that you're yeah. talking about. Oh, oh, yeah. No, no, but basically, like, you come to the door, you go trick or treat, and he would just snap a picture of all the kids. But you're right. He might yeah, I don't yeah. think you could do All those that pictures, though. yeah, all year long, they were in this other uh -oh. little special yeah, room. Yeah, right, like the, the, all the other all, days of the year. Yeah, just pinned all over the wall. Where do they live? Why did he take them? Well, 
now you've made me think now a new thought. Yeah. <laughs> There'd be lots of pictures of those costumes where you buy them in the bag and they're just like the plastic yeah. suit with the plastic mask. Yeah. I had a Catwoman one of those where they smell kind of weird too. Yeah. Do you know what kind of stuff it's I'm like talking about? Vinyl is so cheap. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I think I had it's a wolf giving, Yeah, it's, 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 it's really bad to breathe that stuff in. <laughs> but it's like a nostalgic smell too. They well, really I have to say, I mean, I am more. extremely proud that I have never bought one of those, you know, costumes in a bag. Oh, and really? um, I always would just plow through the closet and, you know, you know, try to find something that I already had. Yeah. I always like really believed in like just doing it from what you have. Mm -hmm. And um so yeah, they were pretty bad costumes <laughs> looking back on it. But then you're not the same as five other kids yeah. in yeah. school. I guess that's true. I know everyone's gonna be picking out their costumes by the time this show is on. They've already mm -hmm. probably Picked four or five for all mm. the parties are going to go to. Yeah. And the weirdest costumes for me to see on the street was right when we were in New Orleans. Literally, we had just done the first you know season of American, of American Horror Story and Twisty the Clown mm -hmm. oh, was yeah. part of yeah. that. And not even a month had gone by since it had aired on on the TV, and there was a Twisty in on Bourbon Street, you know, in full <laughs> beads <laughs> and. It, I think we were together on the yeah. street. We just I couldn't believe we were like, there's a twisty. Like, and yeah. that is like, for me, still like really cool and That's thrilling. A great when character. I, when yeah. I see Twisty the Clown or anything David has created, some of them are, you know, you see the. But the one that he created for Cabinet of Curiosities, I'm really curious if that's going to be a costume. Yeah, Ooh. somebody going to have to work really hard to get that. <laughs> it's going to be really tough to make on that one. by Halloween. Yeah. Which seasons of American Horror Story did you guys work on? We started in season five, I think. It oh. was a uh, freak show and then did basically seven years. Oh, yeah, wow. We went in 1984, yes. Yeah, so oh, you did do 1984? Yeah, the beginning I did of watch 1984, that one. yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but all, a lot of those, a lot of those, especially in the season of Cult, mm -hmm. where it was about the election and, you know, politics, and David made a whole series of masks that, I mean, actually, you see kids wearing them at Halloween now, even at shows. They're they're really creepy masks, and that that's fun to see too. There's yeah, a, there's several things from American Horror Story that now are kind of part of Halloween costume shops. Did you do uh, Scream Queens at all, or no? Yeah. Okay. Both so, the yeah. Scream Queens. The yeah. Red so Devil the, and... the Red Devil. Or oh yeah, the Red Devil. The Red Devil. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. one. That's great. a great costume mm -hmm, too. For sure. Yeah, that one is. I can see. I don't see that many red devils out there. I've seen a couple. Well, it's a little elaborate. I feel like you got to put the money in to make it look good. Yeah. They're just like half-ass a red devil. I know. Yeah. <laughs> He's very slick. He's yeah. very, very slick character. So, but yeah, that's. I mean, making costumes is actually. You can't find a better fun job. I have to say, just watching him design them and. And figure them out, and they have to, you know, be able to be worn too. You can't just, you know, let your mind run totally wild. <laughs> yeah, um, it has to be a yeah. practical element. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well. yeah, I mean, it's got to go on a human being. Yeah, that's the hardest <laughs> part. So, that's it's been one of my the best parts of working for Dave or with Dave is doing that. Not working for me. <laughs> I mean, I am kind of working for him in a way because I now I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna leave him behind. I'm gonna like. Get more acting jobs now. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we hope to see you and so much more in the future. I, I can't wait to, it's weird, we were like recording this kind of far in the past, so I feel mm -hmm. like we'll have watched some of the Midnight Show. Mm -hmm. or Midnight, Midnight Club. Club. Midnight Club. Not bad, yeah. 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 Did you ever read those books? Christopher no. Pike books? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, I mean, I didn't either. They and weren't. Were they like my... YA? Uh, yeah, they were YA so... like in the 90s. Like, okay. you're probably a little young, actually. They're, um, it seems like people who were like in their 40s really read them okay, okay you know? yeah um but yeah I've, i mean i've read several now mm -hmm. and they're different kind of young adult fiction i mean they're really different and you know mike flanagan has done a great job bringing it to the screen yeah, i can't wait to hear nice. what everybody says yes. i can't wait yeah, yeah. please i come visit me out. if like you see me in your town or you know if there are any way yeah or... i'll be doing a couple i guess one in um one in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. in November, okay. and then next year I have a few, I think, already being scheduled in the spring, but that's where I get to hear the fan feedback. Like, people can actually tell me that they liked something or didn't like something, or... Did, what, does anyone ever say that they didn't like something, like, in person? I can tell by the look on their face. Like, <laughs> I'll say, oh, I saw you in that, and then I'm like, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and... 
and oh. <laughs> or I'll agree with them like yeah that wasn't the strongest you know performance perhaps or, you know I'll, I'll get let them off the hook easy. sure sure <laughs> well we hope to see you at many conventions coming up and on screen and I, I'm so excited for both oh you. well thank yeah. you and, and happy Halloween yeah. yes you too and, and this month is filled with so much yes it is so much <laughs> stuff right up your alley yeah this weekend we're shooting something next weekend is Son of Monster Palooza which I'll at least be at and Chelsea I'm might be at I'm thinking about it yeah, yeah I'll probably and... be there on Friday I oh think, yeah or Saturday yeah. oh cool great well we'll see you there okay then. please mm-hmm. come visit me yeah yes. and then eventually I would like to do a video at the the, the shop and like you're welcome yes, yeah come on please. over yeah that would be great we'll like, let you know when some like there's some cool things that you can we can talk about there yeah because mm-hmm. we always highlight you know especially the makeup effects and and all yeah. that on the channel well so. thanks to people like you it's such a popular people's interest is just skyrocketed Good. because they get to great. hear you know about the nuts and bolts of all of it so. yeah i think i think when you see the behind the scenes like footage of people making these masks and and these effects i think that turns a lot of people onto that idea of like, oh, that, that could be a job for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right. I think that's great. Yeah, so many kids are going into it. We always tell them, you know, study art in high school, mm-hmm. you know, learn to sculpt or learn to paint or learn to draw, do something that really, you know, gets you into the that imagination you know, celebration in your own life. Mm-hmm. And then you have a lot to work with once you get it to Hollywood and people are looking for that. Oh, well, thank you both so thank much you. for joining us. This you guys are so great. Yeah. Oh, we're so happy to be here. Yeah, shout out Mary E. Blaine and your weird book. Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Oh my gosh, we should try and like do a seance and contact her on Halloween. Oh, yeah. And have her come great play games idea. with us. Find out she married. We can dress up like her for Halloween. Yes. We'll have to find a picture of her maybe or an illustration. <laughs> yeah, we'd have probably like a drawing. Yeah, yeah, a drawing of her. But it probably has like that Gibson girl kind of <laughs> yes, hair. Yes, for sure. Where it's the big kind of poofy with the bun on top yeah you could make, make that wig like that <laughs> absolutely that would be great maybe <laughs> one riddle for the road <gasps> yes yeah, yeah. riddle for the road okay let me see well, you have to yeah vet it first yeah yeah that's <laughs> make sure it's not racist <laughs> yeah here we go when has a man four hands Ooh. when does a man have four i'll say that in more modern day english when does a man have four hands when the doctor from Human Centipede gets nope. a hold of him? <laughs> <laughs> Any idea? I, I, I can't say it out loud. They just immediately x-rated yeah. responses. All these horror people in here. Just <laughs> yeah. like, uh, no, uh, it's when he doubles his fists. What the fuck does that mean? When you double your fists, right? That's what? what that means, right? You like double this? Oh, yeah, you double your fists, but that... I, I guess mean, it's so like double. So it's, it's just like a, it's a play on yeah. words, yeah. Okay, that's well, there, No, there's Let's this other one, the one. shoe one. Where... Oh, that we had to Google what, hold on, I'll find you that. It's like what letter fist. of the alphabet is most, what Yeah, is what letter of the alphabet is necessary to make a shoe? And the answer is the last. And we just sat there like. What the fuck does mm-hmm. that mean? Like Z? Z- Zapatos? But no, apparently the a last like, the last is what makes your shoes. Yeah, I didn't know that. That yes. it's like the the mold for a shoe's form is a shoe last. The last, but I mean that's not a letter of the alphabet. I think they well, would guess, have them. Uh, I, yeah, I guess shoe lasts are like uh, organized or whatever by letter or something. I don't know. Oh my gosh. We have to be cobblers too. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a, here's we'll do. This is a better one. Okay. Than, okay. You keep saying that. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> Listen, they're from 1912, right? I'm trying to find one that makes any any sense. What is that which is put on the table and cut, but never eaten? Not cheese. Not cheese, (laughs) no. (laughs) (laughs) What's put on a table and cut, but never eaten? Oh, God. Depends what movie we're in. (laughs) (laughs) Me after a workout, and I'm just tired and need to rest. <laughs> no, that's not oh, it. Oh, uh, the James Abs. <laughs> no, no it's, a, it's a pack of cards. Oh, oh okay, well, that's, that's a good one. one. There we go. Okay, we've got a good one. <laughs> Yay. Thank yes. you both Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, where can people find you? Do you use the social media at all? or anything? Um, I do use Twitter, so I'm, ha- I'm Langenkamp H., and Dave's Twitter is 
More Instagram. Oh, okay. Instagram. Be AFX Studio. Got oh, it. Good. Good. AFX yeah. Studio, right. The visual medium, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. She's <laughs> words on pictures. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's the, that's the best way is to find, and David posts such cool things. If you go to, yeah, AFX Studio on Instagram, he has a lot of gags that he's done over the years, like videos and things you can see, some of the behind the scenes work at the studio. It's Maybe Halloween. we'll try and put up some vintage Halloween stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. vintage Halloween Jeez. stuff. Have you ever considered TikTok now that it's more established, or is it still too, like, we're just, much of a new I, thing? I, honestly, we're just, we're just I just... dumb about it. Yeah, yeah I'm just... Too. We pay someone to we, do our we TikTok pay, We pay I'm a 20-year-old to take care of it for yeah. us. Okay, we'll talk later. I'll get a number from you. <laughs> oh, man, you know where to find us. I'm at Carebeck, C-R-E-B-E-C-C on Twitter and Instagram. And, and Debbie James on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Yes. There you go. Yes. Cool. Great. Right. Thank, Thank, you Thank you so guys. much. This has been the, the Debbie, Debbie Podcast. Podcast. <laughs>